Hello, my name is Farrick. Today, we'll be talking about how to set up the software necessary to participate in or to host a Link to the Past multi-world randomizer. The first half of the video will focus on how to participate in a multi-world game. The second half will focus on how to host a game. Before we begin, there are two pieces of software that you'll need, and both are linked in the video description. The first piece of software is called SNES 9X Multitroid. It's a version of SNES 9X that's capable of running Lua scripts. You can find it inside of its Google Drive, and you'll want the version 1.60 Win32. The second piece of software you'll need is called Berserker's Multi-World Utilities, which is located in his GitHub inside of the Releases page, where you'll always want the most recent release. Scroll to Assets and download Windows64.zip. Once those files are downloaded, extract them to a place you feel comfortable using them. I've chosen my desktop. Open Windows X64, which is Berserker's folder, and place your base ROM inside of this directory. This is the Japanese 1.0 link to the past ROM. It should be called Zelda no Densetsu Kamigami no Triforce Japan.sfc. You are legally required to obtain this ROM by dumping it from a physical cartridge that you own. Once this file is in place, open the player's directory and configure your YAML file. It should be called easy.yaml. This YAML file is a set of configuration options that allow you to play the multi-world how you would like and lets other people play how they want. So if you want an item randomizer, somebody else wants key sanity, and another person wants enemizer turned on, you can all play with your desired settings and still participate in a multi-world together. The first thing to do in the, in the YAML file is to change your name. This is what will appear inside of the game as you're playing and what will appear inside of the client as you're sending and receiving items from each other. The options in this file are weighted. So for example, Map Shuffle is currently on 0, off 1. This guarantees that map shuffle will not occur. To weight them equally and give you a 50% chance of map shuffle, turn both options to 1. If you would like a 90% chance of map shuffle, on should be 9 and off should be 1. This file is clearly documented as to what each option does. And at the bottom, you'll find that there are ROM options that you can set and weight as you would like. If you would like to play as a sprite, which is not included in this list, simply enter it and weight it as you would like. Once your YAML file is configured, please rename it. This lets the host and anyone else you send it to know who it belongs to. At this point, you should send your YAML file to your host or to the person generating the seed. And then, go back out to Berserker's folder and enter QUSB to SNES. Here, you're looking for a program called QUSB to SNES.exe. Double click that. It looks like it does nothing, but it does appear inside your system tray with a My Little Pony icon. Please right click on it and hover on Devices to make sure that Enable Lua Bridge for SNES 9X and BizHawk is enabled. If it's not enabled, please turn it on. If you happen to launch QUSB to SNES twice, you'll get an error message. You can safely ignore this. QUSB simply doesn't allow itself to be launched more than once. At this point, you should be waiting for a zip file from your host. This zip file should contain a patch file that looks like this. It should include your name and have a file extension called bmbp. During this next step, please pay attention to the upper left of my desktop as a file will be created there. Inside of Berserker's main directory, find berserker multiclient.exe. Take your patch file and drag it on top of berserker multiclient.exe. This both opens a server and creates a ROM file on your desktop. This ROM file is created wherever your patch file is. So if your patch file is in a different folder, that's also where your ROM file will be created. 
You'll also notice that the client window is waiting to connect to QUSB to SNES through a SNES 9X Multitroid connection. So let's open our SNES 9X Multitroid directory, which we unzipped a moment ago, and launch SNES 9X. Load the ROM that was just generated for you on your desktop. And then click on File, hover over Lua Scripting, and click on New Lua Script Window. This opens a box asking you to look for a Lua Script. Open the Browse dialog, and we're interested in a, a file that is inside of our Multitroid directory. It's inside the Lua folder, and we want multibridge.lua. Click Open, and you should see that you've been assigned a name. This name isn't important, but it may appear later. You'll see that the client has automatically connected to the server. If at any point during the game you are disconnected, your host can provide you with an IP address that you can use in the client to reconnect. Additionally, Berserker's multi-client will attempt to automatically reconnect if you are disconnected at any point. You are currently able to play in the multi-world. Since the server is connected, you're able to go ahead and join and send and receive items to your heart's content. But if you would like to use auto-tracking, Emotracker actually has support for multi-world. So we can open that and drag it to a size where it doesn't consume your whole desktop. And then find the robot face in the bottom right corner and right click on it. Hover on SNES and click on Lua. You'll see the robot face turn yellow. This indicates that Emotracker is awaiting a connection. To connect Emotracker to SNES 9X and the multi-world, go back to your SNES 9X, click on File, and open another Lua script window. This time, the file we're interested in is located inside of Emotracker's installation directory. For me, that's on the D drive, inside of Program Files by 86, inside of the Emotracker folder, in the Connectors folder, the SNES 9X folder, and finally we want connector.lua. So click Open, and you'll see that a connection has been established. If you see that the client is attempting to reconnect while you are browsing for your Emotracker Lua file, that's just because the client can't communicate with Multitroid when it's paused. And here you can see that it has successfully reconnected. And it's a good example to show that the multi-client will attempt to reconnect automatically in the event of a disconnection. At this point, you're good to go. Auto-tracking is all set. You're connected to the multiplayer server, and you can start playing. Good luck. I hope it's not a ped seed. <laughs> if you would like to host your own multi-world game, there are a couple other things that we should talk about. But first, I'm going to close absolutely everything that I have open, including the extra server I have on the side for example purposes. Okay. So the first thing to do is to configure your host.yaml file. This is inside of Berserker's main folder. Looks a little something like this. And there's one very important option to set first. You'll find that there's an option set for disable port forward. Set this to 1. This prevents the server from attempting to automatically tell your router to forward whatever port the server is using. In some cases, this option does work, but for most people, it seems their computers or their routers don't allow it. So what you should do is go into your router settings and forward the default port for multi-world to the system you intend to use to host your game. The default port for both Berserker and Bonta's multi-world implementation is 38281. If you choose to use a different port, you can set that in the port option here. Again, the default port is 38281. Once you have that set and you're satisfied with the other options inside of your host file, we can move on. 
Open your players directory. And collect YAML files from your players. And place them in this directory. Once that's done, go back out to Berserker's main folder and run berserker multi mystery.exe. This will generate a game. And once everyone's worlds are calculated and folders are done, it will create, according to your host file, a zip file which has everyone's patch files in it. And you'll see that it automatically hosts the game. And it does list your public IP address here in case you need to give it to one of your players. I'm going to drag this off of the screen. And you'll see that in this folder, a multi-mystery folder has been created. In this folder, you'll find the multi-data as well as all the ROM files for each individual player. However, it is not legal to distribute ROM files. So you'll find that a zip file has been created. And if we open this, go away, Renrar, you'll see that everyone's patch files are in here. And these are completely legal to distribute. So send this zip file to your players. Watch as they connect to the game. And then follow the process that we used a couple minutes ago to connect to your own server. Now you're able to play in a multi-world that you're hosting. Enjoy. And for you, I hope it is a pet seed.